Okay, there we go. All We're right. all set now. <laughs> it's been a few months since I've had to yeah. do this, literally. All right. Uh, so we'll get started. Hopefully next year we'll be at Orchard Lake St. Mary's having brunch and while uh, you listen to this. So who are we? Uh, we're the community who gets got together in 1974 as a 501c3. Uh, and why do we do that? Because history matters, knowing about our past enriches our quality of living. Our mission is to uh, collect, preserve, and share, stimulate public interest in the history of Kego Harbor, Orchard Lake, Sylvan Lake, and West Bloomfield. We have a website with 6,000 searchable archives, collection database added since uh, 2017. Our Orchard Lake Museum was in 2021, January through August was closed due to COVID. Then in September through December, we opened with all new exhibits inside and out, increased hands-on activities inside and out, and an open house each week. We have merchandise available. Uh, some of it's at Orchard Lake Schools, Orchard Lake City Hall, and West Bloomfield Town Hall. Our Orchard Lake Museum uh, open house reopened in September through December with additional open houses, the first, the fourth, the fifth Sundays, and third Fridays, one to four. And I see my images disappeared. Oh, well, look at that. Uh, January through uh, August, it was virtual with host Corey Taylor. We had all new historical presentations about our local history and we produce local history content videos. Oh, <laughs> we're in a new mode. Uh, we have one through 13, or I'm sorry, 11 through 13 programs annually. In 2021, our virtual pre presentation attendance was 201. So the highlight of the year for us was our Orchard Lake, Grand, Orchard Lake Museum Grand Preview and reopening. We had welcome remarks by the city Orchard Lake Mayor and the Chamber of Commerce Executive Director. Remarks supporting the importance of local history by West Bloomfield School District Superintendent Dr. Hill, Michigan Representative Carter, Michigan Senator Runstead, and on Sunday, James Kraft from the Oakland County Historical Commission. Municipal leaders cut the ribbon for the East Door and West Door and board members for the East Door. This is available on YouTube and over the course of the weekend, 200 people attended. We were, uh, we were thrilled with our uh, comments we received as well. Usually our Aunt Apple Island tours are our main, um, our most popular fundraising event, or uh, I'm sorry, our largest event. In 2021, we produced a virtual tour, now on YouTube, and we had 63 people attend virtually. We had group and community programs. In 2021, a highlight was that the virtual second grade Apple Island Explorers Journal and Teacher Guide was created by um, Christy Forehan, who's now a school board member uh, an ardent history fan, especially of Apple Island. So she was the perfect and a very creative person. So she was the perfect person to uh, volunteer and get this uh, set up. We have communications. They're available at municipal offices, the library and the Senior Connect Center. Our program descriptions are in the newspaper when we can and some in three feature articles. We have an activities guide ad three times a year with West Bloomfield Parks and the West Bloomfield Today publication posts our events as well. This year we have more to say about social media since we ramped it up a lot. Uh, COVID has been pretty interesting for us. It's given us more incentive to connect with social media and those are some amazing statistics that Corey developed. Our post reach went from 162 to 8,568. 
Our user engagement more than doubled. Our e-blast increased by, by some, uh, but all of the YouTube uh, activity increased immensely. All of our videos that we produced are now posted online and that uh, increased as well. Then we also have a little chart there of our five most popular videos. On YouTube, as I look at it more and more, I learn more and more. We have 50 plus videos. We have playlists. The top ones are history, presentations, virtual programs, and virtual tours. One of the things I'm most proud of in 2021 is that Civic Center TV uh, finished creating a uh, video perspectives on traditional Native American life, Apple Island, uh, and that's available on YouTube all the time. We also have Then and Now, Our Four Communities, that was a, a huge effort by us to create a video about our local history with a tour. Check it out. Okay, let me, whoops, get going here again. Uh, Okay, our attendance uh, for 2021, we had 1,064 people. Our large events so, um, was the open house with two, uh, 292 came to the open house. Uh, that's, I'm sorry, that's the total. We had 45 attend our supplemental open houses, uh, which is a number we never have had before. We've never been open more than once a month. So from September through December, we had a, uh, a trickle of people come in, but that gives people a up close and personal uh, experience at the museum. Our other statistics are there. Uh, for our membership, you can see we're at 97. So we actually did really well this year, uh, which is great. Our community presence has been, I'd say huge. We have three displays at the library, uh, more than usual. Uh, our usual ones at uh, municipal offices. Uh, we now had 12 interviews with uh, the Megacast and the Splash Live program, which is produced by our Civic Center TV. We participate in community groups and activities. And there is a list of everything we've done over our uh, recent past. This summer, I participated in Sylvan Lake's 100th anniversary as a village. We also participate in community events. Some were on hold last year, but new ones were started as well. West Bloomfield Township had their Juneteenth celebration, and we had some history to share, uh, thanks to Neil Hepburn. We also participated in a wellness fair that was well received with our presence there as well as our Heroes Appreciation Breakfast. Uh, veterans enjoy stopping at our table. It's, it's a highlight for them at the event. Our involvement with Apple Island is listed here. New in 2021 was that seven paths were cleared by the City of Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield School District, West Bloomfield Parks, with Orchard Lake Country Club providing transportation. We had many storms this past summer, blowing down trees and covering men, you know, seven to eight paths. Uh, and they were huge trees that the, the pile would be six feet high. You couldn't get by them. So that was vital. There's our past history with Apple Island. Uh, here's a past project we did with the outdoor wayside exhibits. Other special projects of history markers and our school history project. Other projects are speaking out on issues. Then last year we reorganized the museum uh, in 2020, sorry. And in 2021, there's at the bottom all the new exhibits we installed inside and outside the museum with a new hand pump. Okay. Uh, we nominate and receive awards. So the, the screen's getting pretty full. 
Last year, uh, the Hidden Treasure Award, Award was given to Barb Krauss. Our President Merit Award last year was given to Mel Rikus. And the President's Award or the Merit Award was given to Rob Gregory, Carol Fink, Sue Griffer, Christy, and Corey Taylor. This year, it'll be given to Hannah Dagg and Diane Eats. Our Distinguished Service Award this year is being given to McQuan Dunn, Mike Jewell. We've received recognitions and last year's recognition for proclamations are added in the bottom left corner. Our 2021 leaders, Karen Pushy of our board, Linda Kidd, historian, Carol Fink, corresponding secretary, Diane Eanes, recording secretary, Hannah Day, communications and website, myself as president and programs, and Sue Williams as treasurer, exhibits, and researcher. Our finance committee is Christian Sonneville as the chair, Sue Williams, myself, Jim Basin, and Steve Briggs. And then Corey Taylor is our office and activities coordinator and our communications coordinator. We are thrilled to have active committees of building and maintenance uh, in 2021. New is an education committee has been revived, but Carol Fink, Linda Kidd as chair, and others pitch in. Uh, our senior resource group liaison, Barb Kraus. Our museum exhibit committee and support, Bill Vertakis, Hannah Dagg, Neil Hepburn, Carol Fink, Christy Forehand, Gina Gregory, Sue Griffer, Neil Hepburn, whoops, twice, Linda Kidd, Helen Jane Peters, Duane Sonneval, and Sue Williams. Museum Exhibit Maintenance, Carol Fink and Rob Gregory Chair. Michigan Week Committee Breakfast and Awards Committee, Karen Pushy, Sue Williams. West Bloomfield School District Liaison, Christy Forehand. We also thank our sponsors and partners for 2021. Our Apple Island Silver Sponsor, Bugs Beto. Our History Matters Newsletter, Sunrise Senior Living Bloomfield was the spring sponsor as well as the fall. Our program sponsors was Gino's Pizzeria and Italian Restaurant, Malaluca Wellness Online Shopping, Petite Gardens, and Sunrise, Sunrise Assisted Living Bloomfield Hills. Our West Bloomfield Activities Guide GWBHS ad sponsor was Seniors Sunrise Senior Living Bloomfield for the spring and the fall. Thank you. So what's new for 2022? Well, West Bloomfield Library and West Bloomfield School District middle school students are utilizing our collection memory programs as well as the library. Uh, our clock was repaired, and the photo on the right is uh, him, the repairman in action. He took the whole thing apart, and that's the works of the clock in his hand. Uh, we're going to be hiring replacement staff. Uh, importantly, very importantly, and also is our strategic planning. It's going to be from 1030 to 1230 soon on February 9th the 23rd and March 16th with professional facilitator Deb, Deb Macon, who is also a member and has been active in our community for 40 years. So see our website, uh, it, you can attend by person at this point anyway, and by Zoom. We'll continue with the museum open house every week. Uh, we now have, as of two days ago, a weekly five minute splash live interview opportunity. That would be a huge challenge for us to work with, but it's something to consider. We also hope to have live in-person programs with the second grade students returning to Apple Island uh, with our updated museum visit plan that will be newly implemented. So how do we do this? We do this with supports from donations, grants, memberships, tribute, and memorial donations 
plan giving, partners, volunteers, retail supporter, and sponsors. And so there's our list of all of them. We're very grateful for all of them. Thank you. What's needed? Your attendance, membership, sponsorships, and financial donations. We only receive donations. And as you can see, we're always trying to do more to serve our community better, which needs more resources. So help us thrive to preserve and share our local history. There's more about our strategic planning session. It'll be February 9th, 23rd, and 16th. Uh, we hope to meet at the Orchard Lake uh, City Hall, if that's possible. And we'll be working on our facility, our storage, and our sustainability. Uh, and we need volunteers to do that. It, it needs to be a, a huge team project, and I won't be able to lead that. So I'm looking for people to uh, step up and help out. So support Greater West Bloomfield History uh, Historical Society, History Matters. Thank you for your attention. Back to you, Corey. All right, thank you. Um, so our next, uh, whoops. Um, our next presentation is going to be the treasurer's report. Uh, so Sue, if you are ready, um, I'll share my screen for you. Um, and then we can talk about finances. All right, whenever you are ready, Sue. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, okay, thank you. Good morning. Um, I'll just read the paragraph. This is a statement of our financial activity for the year 2021. And as it says here, it was a challenging year for us, but with good planning, we made it a productive time. In spite of COVID-19 restrictions, we were able to produce a number of video programs and create outdoor exhibits, produce quality newsletters, and continue installing new exhibits in the museum. I want to thank the Finance Committee that oversees the Francis Gadd Legacy Fifth Third Investment Fund. Under their watchful eye, our investments have done well. This fund has provided a lifeboat during these challenging financial times. And those members are the chairperson, Christian Sonneville, Jim Basin, Steve Briggs, Gina Gregory, and myself. And of course, the investment consultants from uh, PNC. Uh, revenue and support. Our membership was uh, down financially this year. Um, Program sponsors were up. Those are the um, companies and people who, who are sponsoring our advertising and website and open house events. Our miscellaneous income and memorials were at 1371 and museum sales were 441. So our, our total uh, revenue this year was 6,312. We transferred from the GAD Legacy Fund, Fifth Third Investment, $15,000. So that gave us a $21,312 um, monies to work with. Our expenditures, you will see, total $37,953. So we used uh, the uh, over $18,000 we had at the beginning of the year to meet our expenses this year. So what does it mean for museum expenses? These usually run between eight and $9,000 to keep the museum open for the year. That includes our lease, utilities, internet costs, supplies, office supplies, building and grounds, and any printing that we have for the museum. Um, our program costs, we had uh, uh, production, of uh, videos, uh, video equipment, our newsletters, advertising for all of our programs and community events. Our biggest, uh, one of the biggest expenditures this year, of course, was our exhibits. We um, rewrote, researched, and produced all new exhibits this year throughout the museum and outdoors. 
Uh, the next category is insurance. Our insurance costs were higher this year. We had board liability, special events, and then we had to add a new policy this year because we have some precious items that were um, lent to us from the Cranbrook Institute. And uh, we had to make sure that we had insurance coverage for those items. Administrative uh, and program staff. This is uh, our, our own Corey Taylor. Yeah. And uh, that includes all her work for program, office work, Facebook work, messaging, email blasts that you get, uh, hosting the open houses and the administrative duties. And then our miscellaneous costs um, for uh, annual meeting, bank fees, our reopening ceremony, and other small um, expenditures. So our account balances as of December 31st, our general checking is 1490, and our petty cash was 301, and this GAD Legacy Fifth Third Investment Fund is $418,882. We are a 501c3 charitable organization and as per governmental regulations, detailed financial reports are available for review by the public by request. So I have a big file folder if anyone would like to come in and take a look at all, all of our in revenue and activities and expenditures. This is not an audited report, however, so we need to have a audit review done. All right, thank you, Sue. Um, all right, Gina, if you are ready, um, I will, uh, uh, is it actually gonna be Linda next? Hang on, let me look. Thank you everyone for bearing with us. Um, yes, okay, so Linda Kidd, if you are, ready, um, we can do the election and then Gina can do the awards. Okay, the um, people who are up for um, election are Linda Kidd, Karen Pushy, Sue Williams. I think that's all that, um, who else? Gina, you're muted. Gina, you're muted. There you go. I updated the agenda because I was thinking about it wrong. Since we have three year terms, we only have one person up for election and that's on the agenda. It's and Sue I believe Williams. that's Sue Williams. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just, just one. <laughs> All right. So everybody's muted and uh, so how are we going to- uh, You can- uh either unmute yourself or you can drop your vote in the chat. Um, oh, dropping yeah. the vote in the chat would probably be the best. So yeah. the first order is to um, go to chat and mm -hmm. vote yes for Sue Williams. And then we'll run a, a second chat um, and count those votes. Okay. I I so, believe we do we do have to ask for any other nominations. Oh, oh. yes. So if, if you do, if you'd like to nominate yourself, um, you can uh, put the name in the chat or you can uh, unmute. Oh. All right, so we've got two yeses for Sue, three yeses, <laughs> four. Okay. Riveting, isn't it? Oh, and Rick raised his hand, so that uh, was at five. So, six, Neil. Oops. All right. Um, Karen's voting yes as well. Yeah. Sue Williams voted yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I say since they're all yes votes and we have 10 that yep. uh, the vote is unanimous yep. and carried. All right. So welcome back, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going anyway. <laughs> all right. Uh, 
Thank you, Linda. Um, so now, Gina, we'll go back to you for the annual meeting awards. All right, let me try and do this. Uh, and now I will click on my oh, screen share and there we go. There you go. All right. All right. Well, volunteers are what make this organization. Without volunteers, we would not be here. And without new volunteers, we won't be here in the future. Volunteers make it happen. If you've ever volunteered with us, we appreciate all that you have done. As president, I'm always looking for volunteers to fill position at events, to serve on committees, and to take on leadership roles. Each plays an important role in the health of this organization. We appreciate the vision, work, and successes dedicated volunteers bring to this organization. Okay. Uh, how come I can't make it move? You should just click. Yep, yeah, there you go. There we go. Volunteers make it happen. Today we celebrate volunteers who have shown strong leadership to our society. Each has taken on leadership roles and their skills help this organization function. Without leaders, the organization falters. We appreciate their work. The Distinguished Service Award is our highest award. This year, I have the pleasure to recognize Mike McQuandon Jewell as a 23rd recipient. Mike brings unique perspectives to the society. Since at least 2004, he shared his native heritage with island guests during the annual Apple Island Tours. In 2019, Mike shared his perspectives in a 45-minute video titled Traditional Native American Life, Apple Island, published in 2021 by Civic Center TV and available on YouTube. In 2021, for our museum exhibit updates, he helped us learn more about traditional life customs, and lent us his regalia clothing, headdress, bags, tomahawks, and club. His volunteerism, interview conversation, support, and loans bring deeper understandings of Native life traditions to us. We are appreciative of his support. His award ring reads, Distinguished Service Award, presented to Mike Jewell in appreciation of your volunteerism, interview conversation, loans, and perspectives on traditional Anishinaabe life. Thank you, Mike. This year, I was struck by the dedication and commitment exhibited by two board members. Without their success, this organization wouldn't be as successful. Their volunteer support is deeply appreciated. And after I finish this, we'll have a few words from each of them. Hannah Dagg, your commitment, design, and vision has brought the Orchard Lake Museum outdoor and indoor exhibits to a new level. Your research has brought additional perspectives and depth to exhibits. Designed exhibit panels and artifact tags with professional printing bring exhibits to a new interpretive level. Thank you, Hannah. Her award reads, President's Merit Award presented to Hannah Dagg in appreciation of your volunteerism creating exhibits inside and outside the Orchard Lake Museum. Thank you, Hannah. The next award is for Diane Eanes. 
first in 2014, Diane attended a tatting class we hosted and began volunteering. From 2015 through 2019, she was a volunteer coordinator. From 2016 through 2021, she was a board member and recording secretary. Her leadership coordinated volunteers, improved open houses, designed baseball caps, recorded minutes and kept board records, and shared her areas of expertise with board members. Her award reads, President's Merit Award presented to Diane Eames in appreciation of your 2014 through 2021 volunteerism, recording secretary activity and board member leadership. Thank you, Diane. Lastly, we say thank you to Corey Taylor Numer. Her GWBHS commitment to our social media outreach expanded our communications, allowing for deeper technological use, vital to our 21 video production and math the museum exhibit technology. We wish Corey the best as she accept, accepts a full-time curator position at I thought at the Lille Cedars Arena, it's actually for the Illich Corporation. Yeah. And Part she might be doing else. some exhibits there someday. Yeah. <laughs> so this concludes the award presentation, but I wonder if Mike might like to say a few words because I see him here. Thank you. So, oh, Mike, you're, uh, you're, you have to unmute. There we go. There you go. Yeah, just, just thank you very much. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, I appreciate everything you guys do, and boy, I, I've, I've just never had so much fun. You know, so uh, continue to do it as long as I'm physically able to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, that's wonderful. What you know, without local people helping us with resources, we. We wouldn't be where we are and uh, we're very excited to have such an extensive um, collection of items that we can exhibit to the public and Are it's you, not really spelled out in my report but i'm very excited by everything we have in the museum last you year guys, was fantastic yeah you guys did an excellent job making me look good so <laughs> <laughs> and i appreciate we, we, that uh, you're very welcome. And, and I didn't spell it out, but I'll say that uh, Orchard Lake, or I'm sorry, Oakland County Historical uh, and Pioneer Society gave us, uh, lent to us mastodon bones, which are awesome to add to our collection, really takes us back to our, uh, to the earth, literally, yeah, back to it. an earlier time. And then they also were able to lend us a military uh, music. Michigan Military Academy uh, cadet uniform, which highlights that local history in a meaningful way. Um, so our holdings and what we have to offer has been increased nicely. So we're, we're grateful to the community for stepping up and sharing what they have. And for Carl. Thank you for watching. Please support Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society efforts at gwbhs.org. Thank you.